welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Rafael Vareto. I am a PhD student here in Brazil. And this work was conducted in partnership with Araceli Saldanha and my advisor, Dr. William Schwartz. Uh, we are affiliated to the Universidade Federal de Minas Gerais, and in English, we usually say Federal University of Minas Gerais. Uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, I will introduce you to the SWAX benchmark, a uh, data set designed to evaluate biometric systems under the attack of WAX figures. Uh, first of all, we uh, must understand that biometrics are important for protecting personal information and reduce the risk of identity theft. So, you know, fingerprints, iris, face recognition are probably the most common biometrics available. Uh, we, are, we also know that many technology companies are exploring biometric face recognition as a viable solution nowadays on mobile phones, on bank ATMs. Then if we stop and think, with the increasing number of people spreading personal pictures everywhere, these biometric systems are constantly vulnerable to new spoofing attacks. So then you may ask me, what is a spoofing threat? Uh, is spoofing occurs when an intruder attempts to take the identity of someone who holds a desirable identification clearance. Uh, most criminals employ falsified data to bypass the security procedure and gain illegitimate access to facilities, to important data, and also bank information. And the majority of face spoofing strategies can be static or dynamic. So static presentation attacks include photographs, flat papers, sculptures, and rigid masks, while dynamic ones use screen video replace, a sequence of photographs or video frames. And some of them may even use sophisticated robots that are capable of making facial expressions. Um, then um, the use of masks can restrict natural facial movements uh, when someone smiles, talks, and blinks. So maybe uh, it's more important for attackers to search for alternatives. Uh, and since masks fail to proper fit and match real faces, uh, one thing really important happens. Uh, some anti-spoofing methods may fail to detect the mask, but chances are that recognition systems, face recognition systems, uh, will not recognize an individual due, due to the mask's uncommon characteristics. Uh, apart from the Mission Impossible movie franchise, it is difficult to reproduce a person's face precisely since the masks usually do not fit the face properly. Therefore, when we have wax figures, they are usually more faithful to actual human traits, and they also present a greater chance of deceiving uh, face recognition and face anti-spoofing systems. And an interesting fact uh, 10 years ago um, is that six suspects deceived thousands of people in China and obtained almost half a billion American dollars under a pyramid sales scam. Uh, and it seems that the criminals managed to take pictures with wax figures at Hong Kong's Madame Tussauds Museum. And those pictures, they were used to convince victims to sell assets of their telephone software company at overpriced rates. So here you have the picture of the guy on the left. He was this scammer and he took pictures at a, at a wax museum to deceive his clients. Uh, so you can see that he used wax figures to deceive a lot of people. Uh, in the past years, uh, several data sets have been proposed, but none of them included wax figures. Uh, if you take a look on the screen, uh, the two on the left comprise medium-based attacks, whereas the two on the right regard masks databases. So the first database, on the, uh, the first paper on the left, describes more than uh, describes a data set with more than 4,000 videos captured using the frontal camera of six mobile devices. The second one on the left uh, includes live and spoof videos of 165 individuals, individuals covering a large range of facial expressions, illumination, and pose variations. These databases, they represent situations that usually do not generalize well in conditions where uh, the attacks do not proceed from print or replay spoofing mediums. And now the other two uh, paper titles on the right, the first one on the top, uh, it describes a data set that holds stretchable masks under unconstrained environments, allowing actors to speak and blink in an attempt to pass on a lifelike sensation. However, they were not very successful in that. The second one considers rigid and flexible silicon masks and low-cost cameras with the collaboration of 14 people. The problem here is that masks make it difficult to reproduce 
face for faces precisely. Usually, though, the, the masks don't look like real persons. Uh, now, now let's talk about the the proposed data set, uh, the SWAX face data set. SWAX stands for Sense Wax Attack. And if you take a look at the pictures here, uh, we have face samples collected from online resources and constituting bona fide pictures, authentic pictures in the top, in the top row, and counterfeit images in the bottom row. You may no notice that it's not that easy to tell a real person's picture from a corresponding wax figure photo. So an example could be uh, pictures from American ex-president Barack Obama. On the top, you have his picture on the left side, and in the bottom, you have his picture on the right side. And we can see that it's not that easy to tell them apart, to, to tell which one is fake and to tell which one is a real, uh, an image of real Obama. Uh, the SWAX database is compiled from unrestrained online resources. Uh, they were manu manually captured under uh, different scenarios. Uh, and the individuals captured, framed, they, they did not cooperate. So there are different camera viewpoints. It consists of characters, movie characters, uh, celebrities, public figures, and videos to whom wax dummies have been sculpted into. So the data set contains 33 female and 22 male individuals. And I think it's one of the few data sets holding more pictures of women. For development purposes, SWAX encompasses a leaving one out uh, cross-validation strategy in an attempt to escape unfairly algorithm biases and expose overfitting occurrences. Uh, the data set is divided into four protocols. The first one, the unsupervised protocol, better represents actual scenarios. Since uh, real-world biometric applications are inclined to anticipate all sorts of illegal intrusions and undergo attacks of distinct nature, uh, which are usually unknown to the training stage. So in this protocol, only one class, uh, only the class comprising authentic face pictures are characterized and allowed in the training step. Uh, some conditions apply. Uh, procedures claimed to be unsupervised cannot make use of presentation attack samples at the training stage, so they are restricted to authentic samples only. Uh, there should be no parameters carrying bona fide or counterfeit labels, uh, and not to mention relevant information such as file names or singular identifiers. These approaches cannot use beforehand information, and when I say beforehand, I mean uh, information concerning the number of samples include, included in each class, nor use the label distribution in the training and test sets. As the supplementary samples outside SWAGs, they are not allowed in cases where they depict bona fide individuals. I mean, they are only allowed in cases where they depict uh, bona fide individuals, okay? So there should, be, uh, there should not be uh, hand labeled data or information that indicates if pictures are authentic or fake. Uh, now the second protocol, uh, allows information that indicates if a picture is authentic or consists of an attack in the training step. However, these data, uh, this training data, must dismiss any type of annotation or data that does not come from SWAGs, including supplementary picture samples, external tools like facial landmark detectors and alignment methods uh, learned on a separate pictures or feature extractors trained on other data sources. Uh, these algorithms, these external algorithms, they must be unsupervised and they, the data they operate on must be entirely within SWAX database training sets. So in summary, we have three conditions. Uh, algorithms under this protocol are not allowed to use supplementary data, either to identify presentation attacks or perform uh, any kind of picture preprocessing. Uh, the validation and test sets are exclusive to their own purposes and cannot be employed to learn auxiliary methods. Researchers cannot rely on supplementary label data, such as manual face segmentation or facial landmark annotation. And protocol three, it acknowledges the exploitation of additional data sources in the interest of improving the algorithm's precision. So the main difference between protocol number two and protocol number three is that the third protocol supports the adoption of further data uh, only if they do not consist of bona fide or, or counterfeit labels. So then the conditions. I would say outside data cannot consist of individuals included in SWAX database. External pictures cannot hold corresponding information indicating whether they are genuine or fraudulent samples. Additional pictures can be labeled with key points or segments 
for the sake of design preprocessing algorithms. Uh, so you can use an algorithm to align the faces before performing the identification. And no SWAX annotations cannot present information that may accredit the formation of authentic or attack face pictures. And on the contrary of previously described protocols, protocol number four endorses the use of SWAX data as well as the addition of uh, picture samples, regardless of the data annotation provided. You can also use other data sets to make your uh, to learn your algorithm. The totally unrestricted pattern is the most permissive protocol, and it admits outside data sets, external feature extractors, and other methods that have been built on independent visual data, as long as they adhere to some uh, requirements. Supplementary genuine and fraudulent pictures uh, must not be available in the SWAX dataset. So no corresponding identity with the SWAX database. And the external face samples may, included, may include annotated key points, attributes, segments, as well as information carrying bona fide or counterfeit labels. Uh, there are also, uh, for fair literature comparison, we also adopted some standardized evaluation metrics. So there is the attack presentation classification error rate, or APCER, uh, which, is uh, which is the proportion of attack presentations incorrectly classified as authentic presentations. We also have the bona fide presentation classification error rate, BPCER, which indicates the proportion of authentic presentations incorrectly classified as counterfeit presentations. And lastly, there is also the average classification error rate, which uh, comprehends the mean, the average, of APCER and BPCER uh, at a decision threshold that has been determined on the validation step. And we've also conducted some experiments. Uh, as stated before, uh, protocols one and four, they authorize researchers to incorporate other data sets. So this additional data, they are indicated uh, in the table within round brackets, okay? So we've adopted LFW uh, for protocol number one which is a, a data set designed for face recognition and verification. And we also have MFSD data set uh, des uh, designed for face anti spoofing uh, methods. And this one was used in protocol number four. Uh, we also explore some handcrafted feature descriptors like GLCM and LBP. And for protocol number one, we combine it with the one class Weibo SVM which is a better algorithm for open set problems. For protocols number two and three, we evaluate the rhythm approach that search for artifacts in the frequency domain. Uh, other methods like EPLS and ESVM, they consist of an ensemble of classifiers learned on random subsets of the data available for training. And lastly, we have the spoofing algorithm, which is an approach based on deep neural networks that estimates spoof related noises. And when we thoroughly look at the table, we realize that not having counterfeit samples available for protocol number one deeply impacts the results. And the addition of an alignment algorithm on protocol number three is likely improve the results when we compare it to the protocol number two. Uh, for, for protocol number four, the approach called the spoofing is trained in another data set, an external data set, whereas EPLS and ESVM, they are trained on SWAX and MFSD data. Uh, and this uh, database divergence probably explains the gap between the approaches. But we can see that, especially if we take a look at the last column, at the ACER column, we realize that we, we can understand that there is a lot to improve uh, if we add uh, wax figure attacks to anti-spoofing methods. Uh, there's a lot to improve if we consider this sort of attacks. Uh, in, an, in overall, uh, this work, the proposed work, comprises a public benchmark of real human and wax figure still in motion pictures. The database consists of different protocols and standardized evaluation metrics so that we can operate and stimulate fair comparisons among different algorithms. Uh, the results I just showed, they demonstrate that there is a lot to improve when it comes to wax-based spoofing attacks. And uh, honestly, we just hope that with this new data set, more researchers will be motivated to deliver even more robust methods to the challenging area of spoofing detection. And if you're interested, uh, the link for requesting the SWAX database is on screen. And just in case you have any questions, please email me at 
Rafael Vareto at dcc.ufmg.br. And a special thanks to Embrapi, Fatimique, CNPK, and CAPS. Thank you for your time.